there could be more disruption ahead on the fiscal front. That's what we're going to discuss now with Maya McGinnis, President of the Committee for Responsible Federal Budget. Maya, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, there were lots of tense moments in fiscal policy in the United States, closed down, shut down, drama in Congress in terms of who leads it. You would say that we had a strong year fiscally in terms of enacting deficit reduction. Maybe that's what the bond market got the message more of than the rest of us did. So when you look at a fiscal debate in the next month, what is the biggest risk, as you see it, laying on the table now in this debate fiscally? Yes, Congress will be coming back to a lot of unfinished unfinished business. So 2023 actually was quite a good year, despite countdown clocks all the time. Are we going to default? Are we going to shut down? Which is a terrible way to run the government. But overall, there was significant savings of well over a trillion dollars from all the legislation that was passed. However, much of that is because so much of Congress's real work remained unfinished business. So when they return in January, they have huge issues to deal with, starting with, are they going to fund emergency funding for Israel and Ukraine, which I think the majority of members actually want, but there's still big hurdles on whether that will get done. Second, along with that, they've wanted to do big policy changes with the board. That will be both costly and policy changes. There's major disagreements over how to structure that deal, and that could stand in the way of everything. And then the biggest issue is they still haven't funded the government. Mm. We are one quarter of the way through fiscal year 2024. Still none of the spending levels have been determined. That is going to be a big deal in January and the beginning of February. And could, in fact, I don't want to start more countdown clocks, but there's a potential for a government shutdown if they can't come to agreement on those basic numbers. And before we get to the shutdown uh, and all the hand wringing that will come to us in January, let's talk a little bit more about 2023 because reading over your notes, I mean, you make the point that uh, the legislative and executive actions that were put in place this year so far would reduce the projected deficit by $1.3 trillion over the coming decade. I mean, you make the point that uh, the policies that are being considered would undo that. But I think a lot of people would find that $1.3 trillion projection really surprising. I think they would. That was never the political narrative of what was going on because that savings got put in place amidst absolute chaos, basically around the the need to lift the debt ceiling. And we should never be talking about defaulting. Congress ended up putting in the Fiscal Responsibility Act, which put in place savings on domestic discretionary discretionary spending that would affect both this year, next year, and then uh, have savings for the following decade. If they stick to those levels, that will be the largest amount of savings we've seen in one well over a decade. But because, uh, one, the agreements were really not clear, you now have both sides kind of renegotiating them. And two, even though that was a great start, it only focused on domestic discretionary, which is the least problematic area of the budget in terms of growth. They didn't talk about Social Security. They didn't talk about Medicare. They didn't talk about defense savings. They didn't talk about the need for new revenues. So everything where the real structural problems are was still ignored because this the fiscal savings that we really need to look at is politically difficult. And all you have to do is watch our budget process and see our politics is broken. We are unable to budget in responsible ways. So great year on paper. If we keep to that agreement, it could have a big, big difference um, in terms of getting us started on some needed savings. But we still have to do the hard work of budgeting to figure out where exactly those savings on these spending caps will be put in place in the actual budget. That's where things get tricky and Congress may break down on that. Maya, you know what's so funny? I'm thinking, I'm listening to you, I'm I'm thinking, I could go back five years and we could have a very similar conversation or go back 10 years. You have been following, you know, the ins and outs of congressional spending and budgets here in the United States for a long time. You have this incredible perspective. As you look at this Congress, this government, where we are, the U.S. fiscal situation, what kind of great would you give it and and why? Yeah, that's a depressing question. As somebody who has been really um, focused on this issue for quite some time, it has been a steady decline. And the steady decline is an interplay between politics, governing, and our fiscal policy choices. And I think the point where we are so polarized as a country in a way that I think concerns so many of us, we are unable at this point to make decisions that are focused on the long term, focused on compromise, and actually do hard things. All of those are what you need to have fiscal deals that will keep the government debt under control. As a result, our debt has been growing not just during emergencies like COVID when it should have, but during periods of strong economic growth like leading up 
to COVID and since the pandemic has been over. So we now borrow for political expediency. That's the worst I've seen it. I mean, sorry, it's an F. We're, we mm -hmm. are failing on every count. We, we don't even pass budgets. There's a glimmer of hope though, which is there are bipartisan members who are trying to start to work together. They're talking about a fiscal commission. They're talking about looking at all areas of the budget. We will see if we can get enough people kind of engaged in those realistic discussions. But I think a big switch was now fiscal policy, given what's going on in geopolitics, it's as much national security as it is economic policy. And that's starting to bring more people to right. the table. And I just hope that will enhance the discussion. You see China doing it. We had some headlines this morning in terms of soy being buying, in terms of domestic security. And you're right, uh, the pandemic taught us a lot. Long-term planning, I think, this has always been something that people say the U.S. government needs to do more of. Having said that, how is the U.S. handicapped by its role on a global level that it prevents it from doing some of the things it needs to do domestically when it comes to spending and or cuts? Mm. Well, that's right. So the U.S. has commitments that we've made around the world. Part of our national security policy is diplomacy and foreign aid. Those things are going to become more expensive if we stick to the same policies we have in the, fa in the past. Very likely, our defense budget is going to be growing even by a couple percentage points of GDP in the coming decade if things continue to be as risky as they appear to be. That squeezes out other areas of the budget. But quite frankly, the biggest part of our budget that is really putting pressure on the rest of it is the part that has to do with aging healthcare costs, and these days, interest payments on the national debt. Mm -hmm. In just a few years, interest payments will actually be more than we spend on all of defense spending. So you have to look at the returns on these things. Some of these are long-term investments. It's not, a, it's not an issue that we can't do things. The issue is if we're going to do them, we have to pay for them. And the ongoing policy of borrowing for just about everything, that's what weakens the U.S.'s fiscal foundation so dangerously. And maybe puts a little bit more pressure uh, on, on the idea that we need to see rate cuts in this country faster and more quickly. As you say, the interest bill uh, on, 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 the, on the borrowing is uh, pretty aggressive. Maya, thank you so much. Maya McGuinness, uh, the Committee of Responsible Federal Budget. Thank you very much.